guys. I hope you're doing well. I'm just trying to find you. Okay. Here I am. Um, if I were... I hope you guys are doing well. Uh, this sermon title is called DNA. Usually, when you think of DNA, you think of uh, who you are biologically, your makeup. And I want to talk a bit about that, but I want to center this sermon about on um, DNA for this purpose is actually an acronym. It stands for Do Not Abort. Uh, I was just on Instagram, Instagramming a pastor about this kind of subject where about dream killers that love to kill your dreams and how not to let the dream go too soon. We get so excited about um, when God gives us a vision, especially if we're not used to hearing from God or God speaking to us. And when I say God speaking to us, he usually doesn't speak with a loud, booming voice. It's usually either a still, small voice, or it's, it can be through your friends, through your spouse, even through your children. And it's important to let it germinate, to let it grow, um, like a baby in, in the womb. Um, conception takes a minute, but, um, but development takes nine months. And in the spirit, that's what happens too. Um, conception takes a minute, but development can take years. And sometimes when you're waiting for something and waiting for something, you get so tired. You're like, how long am I supposed to wait? Uh, what am I supposed to do while I wait? And you're like, waiting. And you're like, God, please. And you're at, um, like, it gets to the point sometimes when you're waiting years and years for something, years and years for healing, years and years for financial breakthrough, years and years for a spouse, you want to give up because it's not coming to pass in, in your time. But what we don't understand is God doesn't operate in our time, chronos time, human time, clock time. He operates in Kairos time, which is time outside of time. He operates in, when we say God works in his own time, we, we're talking about the Kairos time, um, the God kind of time. And Kairos time is in, infinite, whereas Kronos time is made up of hours, minutes, and seconds, uh, Kairos time, the God kind of time, is infinite. Um, one year, one day, I think it says one day is like a thousand years to God. So while we're waiting and we're waiting and it's taking so much time, uh, we tend to get discouraged and we want to abort we want to see the dream so bad, but when it doesn't come to pass, we begin to doubt. And if we're not careful, I've been here before, where you begin to abort your dream, where you begin to um, 
doubt so much. You're like, oh my gosh, this is never going to happen. And the Lord said today, not only do you have the DNA of Christ, the makeup of Christ, but he also says, do not abort. He said, do not abort. I know COVID threw us for a loop as a society and as a world, the whole world. We've never seen anything like this, a virus killing thousands of people around the world. But he said, even through COVID, do not abort. And sometimes um, when, because I've, I've heard, um, uh, I've, I've heard a lot, I've never had an abortion, fortunately, but I've heard a lot about the effects of abortion. And the unfortunate thing about abortion is because um, sometimes you, the guilt and the shame of aborting a natural baby comes later. It doesn't. It doesn't happen right when you're on the table or when you make the appointment at the clinic, or what happens. Sometimes it happens then, but most time you feel it later, and sometimes you feel it when it's too late. But unlike a natural child. When you abort something um, with, with your words or with understand, with a lack of understanding or a lack of patience, you can resurrect it again. So I feel this in my spirit so bad. God is resurrecting aborted things. I feel this so bad. I don't know. I don't know what's going on, but. I feel God saying, I am, the I am the resurrection and the life. I am resurrecting those dead dreams, those dead things, those, those dead ideas, that dead relationship. I am resurrecting it. There's uh, the thing about COVID, which is not good but kind of fortunate is because it caused us to stop and sometimes when you're caught when you're caused to stop you get to reevaluate your life and i think that's what covid has done for some of us so that resurrected dream that you thought was dead that resurrected relationship that you thought was dead that resurrected um, idea that you thought was dead, it's not. It was just germinating. What I said to this pastor in the video I just posted on Instagram, um, I said that a baby, um, when you have, when you uh, conceive a baby, it takes nine months for it to germinate, for it to grow, for it to um, really become a person. Um, all the tools are there, all the information is there, but it takes time. The eye color, the hands, how tall the person is going to be, how the hair color, whether it's going to be a boy or girl, um, whether he or she's going to be a boy or girl, um, that all takes time. Although the seed is still is there right away, it takes time to develop. And don't don't um, forsake. Don't count development as small because it's huge and sometimes when you're developing a vision developing a dream it takes time and in that time 
be careful who you let into your dream. Only let those in your trusted circle in your dream. Uh, in the dream that God has given you. And I also said that it's not really your dream. It's God's dream. And you also, and you have to walk it out. See, God, I believe a word is seed. And the word of God is seed. It plants something in you. And when that word from God is planted in you, if you give it time to grow, it'll grow into something. It'll grow into what God wants it to be. But sometimes God gives it, us a word and we kill it with doubt, we kill it with fear, we kill it with telling the wrong people and they, um, they are abortion doctors and they kind of, um, with their words, unintentionally most times abort our spiritual pregnancy. And what I also said in that video to that pastor was, when you abort a dream, it doesn't only affect you. It affects the people that would have benefited from your dream. So, because your, your dream or the, the dream that God has given you is not only for you. Properly understood, it's for generations and generations and generations. Let's say you wanted to start um, a business where you, um, a hairdressing business, you like to do hair, you love to do hair, but you didn't graduate high school. But then you were writing, then you were writing all the vision down, you were so excited. You told your husband about this and it was like, he's like, hey baby, that's a wonderful idea. And you were feeling so good about this business, although you didn't have the qualifications, although you didn't graduate high school, although you you didn't do all that thing but you're so talented at doing hair you can do all those designs and you can do uh fancy cutting and you can do hair of all colors not just black hair although you're black you can do caucasian hair you can do um asian hair you can do indian hair you can do all kinds of hair and it turned out beautiful and your husband's like let's go baby you can do this but then you make the mistake of telling your friend about this hair business and he said and your friend said oh it, it's going to be so expensive how are you going to do that you didn't even graduate high school you don't have a business degree you don't have anything and and that kills your dream right there and um and um, Stephanie, who is a young, uh, a young girl, she's 23, and uh, um, she's 23, she would have better, you would have, if you had have continued with that dream, you would have hired her, and you would have if you had continued with that God dream, let it germinate a little more, let it grow a bit more, you would have helped her get her start as even a Caucasian girl doing hair along with a black girl. You would have taught her everything you, you knew about doing black hair, doing all kinds of hair, and she would have taken it further but because you let that, that silly friend tell you that you don't have the qualifications to do this, you don't have the schooling, you don't have the education, it didn't only kill your, your dream, but it killed Stephanie's as well. So 
And quite often with God, uh, He will give you the people that you need to achieve His dream. He doesn't leave you just out there floundering on your own. If you take a step of faith, He will provide. If, it, if the dream is really from Him, He will provide the business manager so you don't know much about business. But he will provide the business manager to help you manage the finances of the business. And he will help you provide the right, get the right banker to get the right business loan or to, to help you fund your business. And he will help you come up with a presentation that investors will want to invest in your um, in your hairdressing business. All God needs from you when it comes to, from, to his dream is a yes. All he needs is a yes and your willingness to do it. It's time for you to step out and really understand that God's got your back. He didn't give you that talent for business just to Sit, up, sit around on your couch. Okay, it's COVID. You can't do it how you normally would. But get creative with, with whatever business you have. God always provides a way if you're willing to step out and go beyond the box of your mind and the box of your understanding. There are times when you need to keep it in the bubble and in the box and there are times when you need to go beyond the box of your understanding. How is this going to work? Um, how could this be? It can be because God said it and if He said it, that is all you need. And He, he won't just leave you out there with nothing. There are books and he will send the people that you need. He will send the business manager. He will send the proper partner. He will send um, business partner that you need. He will take, he will send the proper financing. He will send you a person to help you get a business plan. All he needs from you today is your yes. You can say, I don't know how, I don't know, I don't know where this is going to come from, but Lord, yes. We used to say, um, we used to say this back in the old, the old days, we used to say, I'll say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way, I say yes. Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey. When your spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart I'll agree. And my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. I say yes, Lord, yes. To your will and to your way, I'll say yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey. When your spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart I'll agree, and my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. And one last thing I want to say is it's okay to be scared. It's okay to be scared. We sometimes let fear stop us, but what we need to do is assess the fear and push through the fear. What I mean by assess the fear is that, um, like, um, do an assessment on your fear to say 
are there parts of this that I need to be paying attention to? Um, and or are there parts of this that are trying to stop me? Because sometimes fear is a good thing. Sometimes it's good. It's most times it's good to step out on faith, but sometimes uh, fear can uh, give you a warning sign. Well, maybe I need to do a little, do a little more research. Maybe I need to take a course because what the Lord doesn't want is for you to just go out there and say, the Lord told me this and to make a lot of mistakes. I did that before, uh, if I could be transparent. And when I did that, it caused me a lot of trouble. So assess the fear. And then once you've assessed the fear and uh, prepared uh, for the fear, knock down all the bowling pins for the fear, then you push through. Then you push through it. And the Lord wants you to the Lord wants me to say, He's there. He's there. He didn't give you that dream at night uh, for you to just sit on it. He gave it for, for you to work it. A dream only works if you work it, someone said. And I, I totally agree with that. So guys, thank you today for listening to this sermon and I'll be praying for you. See you next time guys. Bye. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and no pain. When your spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart I'll agree, and my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. I'll say yes, Lord, yes. I will trust you and obey when your spirit speaks to me. With my whole heart I'll agree and my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. I'll see you later. All he needs is a yes from you. And there's, there's always someone around the corner. He's got lined up to help you, so don't worry about that. How, don't worry about when, don't worry about why, it could take years, it could take months, but just let it germinate inside you and he will provide what you need. He will provide the money you need, he will provide the people you need, he will provide everything you need and don't give up on that, that God dream he's given you. Because if he's given it to you, he's obligated to see it through. And he won't let you down. He's not a God, he's not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. He's a God of his word. Everything in the Bible, everything that he told you in the dark, he will bring to the light. He told, there's somebody listening um, to me right now that he's been telling people something in the dark and I'm telling you 
he will he will bring it to light but let him bring it to light don't try and force the vision just write the vision make it plain so that you will run so that it will run and be patient I think that's the scripture forgive me for misquoting if it isn't He's got your back in this thing. He won't let you fall. I know it's scary. I know your hands are shaking. But they're supposed to be shaking. That, that, that's meaning that you have dependency on God to do this. Uh, fear doesn't mean you're weak. Fear just means you, you know that you need God because without Him you wouldn't be able to do this. So, so be afraid, assess the fear, and then push through it. So guys, I'll see you later. Bye. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. I'll say yes, Lord, yes. I will trust you in the way When your spirit speaks to me With my whole heart I'll agree And my answer will be yes, Lord, yes If you're not there yet, if you're still like waffling on the fence, that's okay but just ask the Lord to give you strength and to give you courage to get there. He knows where you are. He knows you're afraid. He knows you don't have enough. He knows you don't have the money. He knows you don't have the education. He, he knows you have three kids to support and can't afford to just go and run a business. You have a family to, to support. But he knows all that. And none of that disqualifies you because he has the he has the right stuff to let you do your dreams to let you achieve his dreams for you rather. They're not your dreams, they're dreams that he's put in you. There are they are seeds that he's put in you and he's depending on you to, to water them and make them grow and even if he he doesn't allow you right into the dream right away you could start by reading books doing research on your craft uh, taking an online course uh, you know you could start several things to achieve that dream you don't have to go out on for prepared but just take a step he's saying now to just take a step take a step and he'll be right there to walk with you and he'll be right there to catch you if you fall thank you my third closing uh for listening I'll see you later bye do not abort dna